It was December, right before Christmas. I received a call from the post office. Small post office, two desk clerks, never have a wait longer than three minutes. They told me that there was a woman waiting in line. Line was getting longer and longer, and there was someone at the head of the line with 60 boxes. So the lovely old woman behind him tapped him on the shoulder and said, you know, excuse me, sir, what is this? And she noticed that they were being shipped to somewhere with Asian writing. She saw dirt falling out of the seams of the package. So she asked the man, excuse me, what are you shipping? And the man said, shh something very valuable. She said, well, where did you get them? He didn't speak much English, but she said he pointed west towards the ocean. So what we did was we had the boxes x-rayed and the boxes revealed Dudley Afarinosa. So the first call I made, opened up the phone book, called the Native Plant Society local chapter. And they explained to me that it was a local native succulent. It was fairly commonplace on the coast from Monterey North. And I said, do you have any idea why they'd be taking it? And no one had heard anything about this. My name's Pat Freeling. I'm a warden or a wildlife officer with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. I've been a warden for about uh, almost 12 years now. Broad scope of things, I'm checking fishermen in the morning, hunters in the afternoon, and now I'm looking for suspicious people who might be taking plants. We had this transition, so abalone became illegal to fish for because the populations have been depressed for so long. Wildlife officers in Mendocino County used to concentrate on trying to catch abalone poachers, and all of a sudden they found that the same type of people were using the same type of behaviors and poaching Dudleya. This may not seem like anything. Some guys took some plants, but I suspect this is something big. This is the new abalone because these guys are getting as much for these plants as they're getting for abalone, and they can stay dry. They're easier to ship. They're easier to package. They stay alive longer. It's, it's, I have a feeling this is the new abalone. I want the ax, absolute maximum we can get. Three South Korean nationals have been charged with trying to export more than $600,000 worth of deadliest succulents to Asia. It quickly became clear that many, many, many thousands of Dudleys were being collected illegally from our national parks, from our state parks, from lands which we all invested in to try and save for nature, for biodiversity. California has something on the order of 40 different Dudleya species. About two thirds of those are rare. Many of those only occur in one or two places. And so just a little bit of collection can really harm them. So down here and over just right here are where there are quite a few plants in place. This hillside is where I caught the guys, and as you can see, there's not a lot of plants. It was covered with plants prior to um, the case that went down here. Basically, what happened was, saw the van on the side of the road, looked inside the van, I saw that it was filled with moving boxes, and I ran a check on the plate, and the plate came back as a rental plate, which in a lot of cases is indicative of someone up to something nefarious. I knew they were out there and I wanted to see what they were doing. So my thought was, I'm gonna sneak in, crawl through the bushes and find them before they see me. So I can document what they're doing. So I put on my, um, my ghillie suit and I came out through the bushes here. I crawled out here and sitting right here on the bluff was a large um, internal frame backpack. I reached inside the backpack and felt around and I noticed they were succulents. Crawled over the bluff and the two individuals were down here on the side rapidly pulling plants out, loading up other bags with the succulents. I had them come up and I detained them. I had them unload all of the plants.
paperwork I found in the vehicle indicated that they were operating internationally. I found business cards from Europe, from Italy, Croatia, Asia, um, Sumatra in particular, and then across the United States, I found a lot of succulent and other plant vendors. I found that they had rented the minivan in San Francisco the previous day, and they were going to return the minivan in Los Angeles. They were most likely going to be traveling down the coast, filling up moving boxes with plants, and shipping them out of the post offices as they went. This was our first real taste of the commercial succulent trade. Details on a very unusual crime ring, a group of people smuggling succulents. Yeah, plants busted in Northern California. Wildlife detectives from several agencies made three separate arrests along Once the it North hit Coast. the news that there were people coming from other countries and just ripping thousands of plants off the hillside to sell in Korea and China, people were furious and they were overwhelmingly supportive. The district attorney's offices were overwhelmingly supportive and it really did validate the amount of time and effort it takes to put these cases together. There's only about 400 game wardens in the state of California, one of the lowest numbers in the country. We rely on the public. Our, some of our greatest cases have come from tips. One of my uh, favorite interviews was of a young woman who was traveling with her family down the Big Sur coast. Uh, we were heading south and we did not plan to stop where we stopped. Uh, my son was in the back seat and he had dropped one of his toys so we pulled over in the next uh, turnout and that was when I noticed the people that were coming up off of the trail. But these people had big large bags and one of them was a soil bag and you could see dirt on the outside and the other was a duffel bag. So we just watched them and we watched for maybe two minutes uh, before we could see them loading the, uh, the Dudleyas in from the bags into the back seat of the car. They didn't really notice me really until I was right in front of them and I took a picture when they looked at me but the woman was careful to look away but they really didn't seem concerned. I asked them if they knew what they were doing was illegal and the, the guy nodded his head and the lady laughed. After, after the citizen, Jay Davis, sent a tip to uh, the Fish and Wildlife Department, they were able to gather enough evidence to get a search warrant that they conducted on the home of the Riveras. They were able to recover a large volume of plant material, over 500 plants. They also recovered uh, her cell phone, and that recovered chat messages between Guan Rong and a family member uh, in China where they were discussing, you know, starting a business to sell these plants. <laughs> a pricing sheet that indicated what they planned to charge for these plants. So uh, we charged both uh, Guan Rong Rivera and Jose Rivera. Uh, Guan Rong appeared to be kind of the mastermind of the scheme. She was charged with uh, grand theft, felony vandalism, conspiracy, and filing a false document. And it was important to charge all of those separate crimes so we could really get into all the negative effects that come from this type of scheme. They removed over 500 native succulents. You can have as many environmental laws as you want, but if you're not gonna enforce them, then it doesn't make a difference. It's hard because in a lot of cases, the criminal says, you know what? I can still do what I'm doing because it's just the price of doing business. And when you get hit with a $10,000 fine and possibly two years of jail, it, it adds a whole new scope to your crime. We're starting to talk about thousands of plants worth hundreds, if not 200 or more dollars per plant and realizing that the math is adding up and that the the, the financial reward of taking the risks of poaching these plants and shipping them all the way back to China and Korea were well worth it to them. 
thinking they were never going to get caught. The craziest thing that we've had happen was, it was a big case where the individuals drove around looking for a place to poach plants. One o'clock in the morning, they parked their van, they walked over to a sheer cliff and put on their harnesses and climbing equipment. These people would take ropes because it was so treacherous that they would tie themselves off, lower themselves down, put somebody at the bottom, and as they're strung up, they're, they're pulling plants off the cliffside at a more than 45 degree angle and tossing them down to their partner who was waiting at the bottom with a backpack stuffing them in. And proceeded to take, I believe the number was 2,000 plants. They loaded up their van, they drove south, they went, hit another national park and took another 2,000. Our officers luckily were able to arrest the individuals involved. These people are, are clearly spending a lot of money traveling all the way from Korea and China, renting vehicles from LAX or SFO, San Francisco, driving up all the way up the coast and staying in hotels. So we started thinking, okay, the motivation is clearly money, but how much money? We've come to learn through investigations in Korea that the plants are selling anywhere from $50 for a single rosette to upwards of $700 plus for larger plants. Multiply that times the number of plants that are being poached off these hillsides and you're getting into the hundreds of thousands of dollars very quickly. And that's what it's all about. It's all about making money and on wildlife trafficking, and in this case, uh, wild plant trafficking. There's a very quickly rising middle class, which is a wonderful thing in China. Millions and millions of people have been pulled out of poverty that are now in the middle class. And as a result, there's, there are whole new markets now for things that people never had access to. And one of them that is very um, valued are uh, decorative plants. So there's a huge uh, black market over there. Here, this plant on our open spaces that we really value and protect are being kidnapped, sent overseas to a black market, and then gone forever. There are several things about the story that really resonated with readers in a way I very rarely see with anything else I've covered. And I've thought deeply about why that is. I mean, on some level, it's a crime story. It's a kidnapping story, that's huge. You know, and of course, there's sort of the David and Goliath story too, where you have these very small, innocent, modest-looking plants being stolen by crime rings on black market. But even bigger than that, I think, it tapped into this real anxiety that Californians have about what's happening to our environment. So once the native plants are removed, invasive non-natives come in, the uh, plants, the native plants provide um, nectar and pollen for bees, hoverflies, hummingbirds, then the things that eat the bees, the bumblebees, the hoverflies. Some of the mice will come in and chew off the flower stalks. Uh, so even hawks and owls uh, may be being impacted uh, by the removal of all these uh, native succulents. We, we don't even know all of the effects uh, of, of taking these out of the wild. You know, the problem is that a lot of poachers are going after the largest plants and rather than grow them from seed, which takes years and years to get up to these big rosettes, they want to start with things like this, you know, really, really big. Uh, and as beautiful as it is, it's just absolutely the wrong thing to do to take a plant like this out of the wild. This one is maybe uh, anywhere from 15 to 30 years old. Some of the ones that are being poached in the wild are probably 50 to 100 years old. Unfortunately, it's a worldwide problem. There are areas of Mexico, somebody names a new species, and you go down there five years later, and the whole habitat stripped. There have been thousands or tens of thousands of plants stripped from the wild. Same thing happens in uh, southern Africa, Madagascar. There are all sorts of species that are just being stripped from the wild there. I don't think it stopped, but I think we've somewhat 
I don't want to say we've cut off the head of the snake, but we came so hard and so fast and the wardens throughout the state started making these incredible cases. It's gone like wildfire. And I think the word has gotten out and we know the word's gotten out. We know they're reading the articles. We know they're reading the dispositions. And I think there just comes a point to where they say, you know what, let's not mess with Northern California. I really like seeing these guys. I and and I just I don't like the idea of people coming here to commercialize and capitalize on on what's in our backyard. I don't think it's right.